Hey, it's the God Awful Gospel Hour, and uh, we got a special guest tonight, uh, Pat Dean. Yes. Yeah, we saw you. Uh, we saw you do your thing at Austin Java, and uh, reached out. We brought you here to thank you for doing something comedy in South Austin. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. So yeah, you guys met me at Austin Java. I was uh, sleeping the floors there. Yeah. And you guys were like, "This guy seems like a pretty cool dude. Let's have him <laughs> yeah. on the podcast." Can you get me some creamer, sir? <laughs> <laughs> I always carry creamer on me at all times. But just you brought because... the creamer so funny. I was like, "Hey, comedy in South Austin." <laughs> yeah, I tripped and fell, and you were like just laughing at me as Creamy, I bled. Slapstick. Yeah. And then the mic didn't work for ten minutes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you guys were at that one. Yeah. yeah so that yeah. was uh, my god. Damn friend Sawyer yanked, uh, yanked the uh, the he's mic. Trying to sit down on the bench or something. Yeah, he was trying. To, he's like doing a bit, and then he uh, go over there. He yanked on his. Uh, he was doing a. He was pretending the fly fish with the fucking yeah, uh, yeah. thing and yeah. with a cord. And we thought that he pulled the. Uh, there was a problem with the microphone, but he pulled the power cable out. Yeah. So that's why it wasn't working. Okay, so it was okay. like this fifteen minute thing, and then he just kept going, <laughs> yeah. and he actually started killing after. Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. He, he was doing really good with no mic. Yeah. yeah, he yeah. kind of murdered a little bit. I told him he should always uh, not yeah. use a mic. <laughs> yeah, you're doing funny fly fishing bits. Now you're doing a funny use your diaphragm bit <laughs> yeah. to project your voice. But yeah, we could all hear him. I mean, Hell yeah. That, we used to go there all the time when it was the Bakehouse. That was the shittiest restaurant in South Austin. Oh, really? It was like Gordon Ramsay's Nightmare. They couldn't pick a thing to do. They had every food from everywhere. They had like goulash and Rubens. Oh, yeah. okay. Well. I went in there. The one time I went in there, I was like, this is the restaurant. This is the scene before Gordon Ramsay comes in, starts yelling at people and yeah. finding all the rotten food Choose in the kitchen. Choose a fucking specialty. That. Look in your fucking yeah. walk and yeah. everything's moldy. Yeah. Do any of those uh, restaurants like stay in business? Whenever I look them up, they are, they're always close. I, I think, think last I checked, there was something like a, I don't know, like 67% closure rate even after um, Kitchen Nightmares was there. There's been like a few that have turned things around, but it's the, the whole industry, is, it's so hard to keep going. Well, you know? I mean, hey, that that's a better successful rate than, than AA. Yeah, isn't AA like 10% or it's, something it's like that? It's about 10%. There's a lot yeah. of overlap between AA and restaurant managers. There's right? a lot. Yeah, <laughs> Those are believe the same me. dudes. Yeah, it's very AA. upsetting. It's a cocaine-fueled nightmare running a restaurant. <laughs> so you went to tech? No, I went to Virginia Commonwealth University, yes, located Richmond, in hell yeah. beautiful Richmond, Virginia. Uh, my ex fiance went there. She was walking home from the bar that everybody goes to at that time, and she heard a fight. So she went around the other block to avoid the fight, and then this piece of hair went down the road in the wind like after a, the fight. Like a, <laughs> and she was like, cool, tumble weave. <laughs> Well, I've been yeah, down there a bunch Richmond. Of times. Richmond is is pretty fucking cool. It Did is. You watch the tight. Guar movie? Uh, no, I didn't watch the. And I've never seen that. No, but my buddy, his band, used Gwar. to uh, share a practice space with Guar. They were on the second floor. Guar was on the first floor, and they used to steal Guar's internet. The Guar documentary is a kind of an ode to Richmond. It's beautiful. Is it okay? Awesome. Well, well, then I'll, I'll have to check it out. Yeah. I was never a huge Guar guy, to be honest with you. So that actually makes me kind of want to watch it. Then my thing was just that scene in Empire Records. So like, oh, that's funny, you know. And then uh, when they were on Jerry Springer and they fed J Jerry Springer to the plant, um, I remember those things. But I never actually sat down and watched or had a Guar album or so anything. So whenever I've seen them outside of them playing music, yeah, on TV shows or doing whatever, it's they're always really funny and yeah. it always looks interesting. But then whenever I hear the music, I'm like, oh, this is fine, I guess. I, mean, yeah. I don't even know what how you categorize it. You got me into a new band, the Ogre Sound. Ogre Sound. In the background of all your shorts on YouTube. Oh, like that one, yeah. Heavy metal animation sounding music. Yeah, my my buddy Aaron found that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for a second, I was like, "What are you talking about?" Oh, the thing that we use every day. I, yes, I've only that. heard that kind of music in movies. I was like, I didn't know I could just have that for driving around and yeah, being dude. a psycho myself alone. Do you guys know the band Judd Judd? Uh -uh. Is it J U D D? J U D D space J U D D. Okay. So this came out when I was in high school, and I thought it was the funniest thing ever. And I recently re-listened to it, and I was like, "Yep, still the funniest thing ever." It's two dudes where they're just making guitar noises, he went and, and one of them is on the left side, one of them's on the right side, and they're called Judd Judd because all they do is go Judd Judd. It is so goddamn funny. Real ultimate power dynamic. One of their songs, it's them tuning at the beginning. So they're like pretending to play harmonics and getting them into.
Fucking rules. It feels like I'm getting yelled at by my dad, but he has a stutter. Josh. 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 That's so cool. You also brought up an old name I hadn't heard in a while, Ben Cholock. Where's he at? How's he doing? Ben Cholock. Uh, so, uh, am I saying that right? Cholock. Cho- uh, yeah, uh, Cholock. 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 So uh, Ben Cholock is a, a troubled individual that I know who okay. was. Uh, we uh, yeah we we used to um, he came live to the together. Cedar door thing a couple yeah, times we also. yeah. That's so funny that you yeah you brought the North Door mic the other. Day. I, I haven't thought of that mic in no, like it was a 30... Cedar Door on Second Lavaca. Is that what it was? Okay. Yeah, my cousin was the manager. He gave me the whole back room so i ran it with uh yeah this guy that got banished from austin comedy oh yeah <laughs> goodbye cat rosminski she was the spearhead on oh Facebook really of like kicking him out of here oh weird she gonna uh, see her tonight right yeah that fucking mic uh i remember going to it uh a few times like 12 years ago it's i hadn't thought about that in forever until you brought it up i found a whole old facebook message of me messaging nick mullen in 20 20- 11 saying great set you want to come do the showcase and he never wrote back <laughs> well uh you know what maybe Just he'll hear this podcast and he'll <laughs> take you up on it do a, do a big uh, reunion show you and nick mullen like the old days <laughs> yeah. i don't know i think he's scared of, speaking of my yeah, roommate has his mattress Kat Ramizginski, he's another one of the ones that comedy comedians that got the shit beat out of them in austin in 2011 yeah Kat and nick yeah uh i think that was was that the one where he he said Sugar Ray? Yeah, he made yeah. a Sugar Ray joke, and apparently there was some huge Sugar Ray fan that got mad and punched him. Yeah, he got Nick Mullen got punched in the face at Coal Town Theater. He said, "What is this Sugar Gay?" Yeah, he said something about Sugar Ray sucking or Sugar Gay or something, and then he yeah. got like punched in the face. Yeah, which is like of all the reasons to like <laughs> get hit. If the all thing. the reasons for that guy to get punched in yeah. the face, yeah. it's so funny that it's that. Yeah. And then for a decade, he said whatever the fuck he wanted. He's like, I don't give a crap. I already got beat up once. Like, yeah, he didn't get beat up for the right like the lamest reason. Yeah, yeah. wasn't he? he? Didn't even say anything controversial. He wasn't like um, Jim Jeffries making fun of guns and having some crazy right winger run up on stage and punch him like happened that one time, which made his career, yeah. which is kind of funny. <laughs> like he was already famous in the UK, I think, but it made him famous here because I remember they were talking about it on. The Opie and Anthony show. You mentioned that before we started recording. Yeah. yeah, the Opie and Anthony show. They were like, "What the fuck is this?" And they just they had him on, and they're yeah. like, "Oh, he's actually really funny." So yeah. Yeah. it kind of yeah made him famous in America. Yeah, uh, Los Estados Unidos, as we call it. <laughs> the Australian accent is already a little funnier than ours, so they get away with a lot. They get a little leeway. Yeah, they can just definitely saying cunt. You, yeah, yeah, you can say like grosser stuff with a with an Australian accent, yeah. and I think it's because they're sort of they're the party boys of yeah. They can be more racist. They're like, we don't know anything. We're yeah. dumb. Yep. Yeah. They get away with it. dude. Yeah. Um. I rem- years ago, my friend, uh, she was a comic for a while. She was from Australia, and um, I was asking her like, what are like, what are like the racial slurs in Australia? And yeah. like, she was so petrified to tell me because yeah. you very much you know doesn't want to say these horrendous words but she like whispered them and i'm like well that just sounds funny like this is yeah. not racist it's always like a like a didgeridoo you know it's, <laughs> it's always got a lot of love uh consonants in it a lot of vowels and consonants like uh, well there's a lot of adventure in australia yeah. even in their yeah. language yeah we they had, want to piss off those mazarenas you know it's, it's there's always things like that right? yeah we had an australian guy on here and i was asking him about this slang the dunk a dunk which is what I heard they call aboriginals because they just run them over oh, in the outback. And they just, <laughs> so they call them the sound that it makes when you run over a guy sleeping on the road. Wow. And he was like, uh, you can't say abos. Yeah. That's the one that yeah, she that's said. basically he, the Australian N word. Apparently. Yeah. That one's um, really yeah. bad. And he yeah. showed me his family portrait and he was the only white guy in the whole thing. He's like, all his brothers are ab, ab- uh, native. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Bushman. We'd like to apologize to all the Aboriginal Australians listening. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're they don't care about racism outside of Australia, but they really care about the interior infrastructure of whatever's happening. They also don't like it whenever you make a joke about uh, Donald Trump being assassinated. Apparently. Yeah. Why? So um, break up your whole. Oh yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Of course. Uh, Tenacious D got canceled over the uh, assassination attempts. It was just kind of an offhanded joke by Kyle Gass, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Australia was like uh, MPs or whatever they are over there were sending letters about deporting Tenacious D the, the after that wizard. joke. Yeah, yeah it's state. very yeah. odd. I don't yeah. know what the uh, the political landscape of Australia is like. Maybe I know it's... they have um, kind of voted in some pretty conservative Trump types oh, okay. over the past, I don't know, 10, 
years. I don't know how they are. See how you guys like it. Yeah, right. It's like Texas. They're super PC in the little cities. And then as soon as you get out, everyone is like yeah. a redneck. Yeah. During the pandemic, it was funny. I, I traveled. Uh, I drove to uh, Colorado and uh, literally oh, yeah. like 15 minutes outside of Austin. is just no masks, no uh-huh. nothing. Like no one gave yeah. a fuck. Yeah, if you, uh, I remember whenever I, uh, after Trump won, um, it was a couple, a few months later. Donald Trump. Yeah. Donald we, should, Trump. We, should, we should specify. D- DJT, <laughs> after 45 won, because, you know, he's Voldemort. We can't say his name. Yeah. Um, he, uh, I went out juice. to uh, Fredericksburg, and um, like the Congrats. kind of clothes stores or whatever, like or like the souvenir shops or whatever, they all had, they, <laughs> they had um, like pictures of the electoral map and all the red on it saying like oh it feels so good and all that i'm like man austin is not that far away but i mean just outside i mean really you make it to cedar park you're pretty much there i mean it's just outside of austin yeah and that's the way of course texas is like that but a lot of states are like that i I know people from pennsylvania from like philadelphia who are always talking about how backwards and redneck texas is and i'm like Go 50 miles outside Philadelphia, and it's yeah. the same thing. You know, like there's there is very uh, anywhere really yeah, leave DC on the East for Coast. Half an hour, it's West yeah. Virginia. Yep. Right. Yeah. Do you want to hear my uh, Philadelphia accent? I can do a flawless Philadelphia accent. Okay. All right. Here we go. All right, I'm from Philadelphia. <laughs> they have high voices and weird accents. You want some water? You want hey, some we water? got some water for you. Get some hoagies. Yeah, hoagies. Get some water. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you makes you want to uh, wash their mouths out yeah. with soap. I mean, <laughs> fucking... something. Where... If you want to buy a house in Maryland, you got to get hay maners insurance. <laughs> Dude, the there's that little slide from. It's almost like you can hear the interstate sl- in the accent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. From from Philadelphia down to down, Baltimore. Yeah, weird. yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the Maryland accent is one of the. Okay, here's what's so strange to me about the Baltimore accent, because the Baltimore accent is like. Oh, oh, hun, we're gonna go over yeah. there, hun. Mm-hmm. And the, cakes. And there are a lot. Uh, a lot. I grew up right outside of Maryland, and I didn't even when I was a kid. I didn't even know that was Maryland accent. I just I thought just people talk yeah. that way. And then, however, no black people Mm-mm. from Maryland have that accent. No, no, it's no, just no, a yeah. white accent. Right. And I don't know what it is. I I guess it's like it's um it's one of those like I guess. Uh, Historically, if you're so segregated, and you don't have any like crossover, like the the accents don't bleed over or anything. I mean, I guess the question the I'm asking is like Great Gatsby accent, like John Mulaney is like the most cunty. And yeah, that's the same area. How do we bring uh, the the Maryland accent to the black community? How yeah, how, how do we right. do an outreach? Because it's a hilarious <laughs> accent. A I've never seen anyone black with it, and if I did, I would love it. A black guy with a Maryland <laughs> accent would be. That's like um yeah that's like a unicorn right corner of the market I think so yeah, yeah. I think yeah <laughs> I think so give that guy a YouTube special now so you have a Landalax Corporation your your uh, yes podcast? I I have a I also have a podcast sorry sorry to compete I'm, yeah. <laughs> there should not be any other podcast yeah. but my podcast yeah, I apologize, for this town how for dare the podcast. another podcast exist <laughs> yeah i'm like it, one of those dogs that gets mad when it sees another dog it's like other dogs shouldn't exist uh we yeah so me and my buddy uh aaron brooks do a podcast called the lanalax corporation which is a uh, it's sort of a cross between uh like dungeons and dragons and black mirror basically i, like oh, I felt cool. like i was listening to zork you go zork? go north you find a thing on the ground with all your hypotheticals. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing. You were yeah. Texting Zork. Did you ever play? Your- no, but but oh, as enough. as you were saying, I realized what you were talking about. Those yeah. those text games. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. We both uh, did those growing up too. Choose your own yeah. adventure. The multi-user yeah. dungeon. Did you ever play Muds? Multi-user dungeons. No. That's like, so back in the day before there was like really the internet. Um, everybody would dial into a BBS, a bulletin board system, and the BBS ran on a server. Okay. And on the server, you could run games, and they were all text-based games. And there was a thing called multi-user dungeons, which were text-based kind of RPGs that you could play with other people. So, and it was like, you know, walk forward, attack, you know, yeah. um, and all that. I was, I, and they were actually really fun, but um, I knew people who just, I mean, it was basically WoW before there was WoW. Yeah. You know, I was, MMO, I was hoping was they like, would do with Baldur's Gate, that they would do it just a tool set and let people be their own DM on that game with the, right. with the, 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 within the constraints of their universe. Right. We, uh, yeah, we, so it's kind of like that. Uh, and we, 
you so yeah it takes place in a universe that wants to ruin your life basically everything awesome. goes wrong <laughs> uh you always die donnie spoiler already lives alert. There. donnie's from donnie was born into that darkness okay, yeah. <laughs> okay good Donnie's yeah. the bane of the good good <laughs> yeah so we we record it uh and uh i apologize sir for bringing this subject up we, we record it very high yeah on on on, on marijuana nice. I, I i know you have children so i apologize but we, we we do do drugs. And, I did cocaine uh, last night for like four hours. Oh, well, then in that in that case, I'm a I'm huge pussy compared care. to you. But yeah, so we we record them and then we put them out every weekday. So they're they're you know, the um, reason people yeah. listen to podcasts. The reason I listen to podcasts at work is because I feel like I'm hanging out with p- better people than I'm working with. <laughs> yeah, for real. So yeah. I can imagine, you know, it's my own escape. This is why the caged bird sings. Either I make clips from my own show or I listen to one where like. It feels like I'm having fun and not in a cubicle. Yeah, so it was fun listening to you guys. Oh, come thanks, up man. With bullshit and fuck with each other. I appreciate. It. Yeah, they, well, yeah. My favorite thing about it is just that we half of the reason we do like the the, the scenarios that happen is always us fucking with each other, yeah. and it's always like it's always at least well, no, he does it too to me. I always put Aaron in these positions that like he has to do something really bad, okay, just something yeah. that he would never do in real life yeah. or, ha- or I'll go, yeah, you know, you don't give a fuck. You're just kind of being a jerk. And he's like, well, I would never do that. Like yeah. he's the nicest guy. So it's really fun. You have to, and yes I know and him very your well. own demise. Well, yeah, that's the thing. It's all <laughs> yes. Anding because it's, it's, it's all improvised. It's improv, yeah. And so yeah. it's like, um, we, and if the, my, our favorite, one of the favorite things about recording that podcast is that because of how stoned I am, I will sometimes forget certain details and so i'll contradict myself in the story yeah and then aaron goes well i thought that it was da, 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 da. and then i have to go oh yeah well here's why that is and you have yeah. to come up with an explanation yeah. you have to for, hamster wheel it yeah, yeah you have to yeah, <laughs> yeah you have right. to essentially do a, a no prize uh like and a marvel comic it's right, never green right. you know there's no com or there's no current it's events. not topical no yeah, not really so yeah, yeah. They're, they're there's always, recurring characters yeah. that 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 pop in and out there's a lot of really bad regional accents yeah. uh yeah, it's it's very strange. You never have to book guests because it only works with you two. Yeah, it's us two. Uh, yeah, yeah. Every once in a while, I'll have a guest. But yeah, we could go months without having a guest. Yeah, but well, it's really fun. I think it's like my favorite thing. My, it's my favorite project to do beyond like doing uh, like live performance. I think. Well, I can tell you that AI does know about you because I couldn't figure out how to spell the name of it on the computer here. Oh yeah. So I just uh, searched for Pat Dean podcast, Uh-oh. and uh, the AI was like. Pat Dean is involved in several podcast projects. So I many. learned nothing. <laughs> a philosophy podcast for idiots hosted yeah. by Pat Dean. Is that you or is that a different that's, Pat Dean? That's me and my, my buddy Ben Sherlock that we mentioned earlier. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, we, we, it's slightly on hiatus just because we're uh, in our, um, our uh, he is super busy with his job. I'm super busy with mine. He's still so in town kind of at, He is, yeah. Okay, so, yeah. At, so at the moment, it's sort of on hiatus, but he, um, yeah, he is a dude who went to Princeton and majored in philosophy because... Fuck it, I guess. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I don't know much about philosophy, or I guess I didn't at the beginning. And so we did it where he every week explained a different philosophical concept to me. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. And then it was mostly I've known Ben since we were uh, fourteen. Okay. So uh, is he from Nova? He's from Maryland, but okay. we went to the same uh, middle school for a year. Donnie, I keep bringing people over here that are from where I'm from. It's so is funny. This yeah. just a, is this just a Maryland, Virginia funny. podcast now? <laughs> yeah, Am dude. I the odd man out? Yeah. Each other. <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, well, I'm from West Texas. So, yeah. well, these Baby. are the comedians in Austin that have responded to my DMs and said, sure, I'll come on your show. And then we end up getting along and talking on, on DM. And then it takes like two days to go. Are you from? Oh, that's why yeah. this conversation is working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all raised the same. Yep. We're the same comedy. You guys courtesy. just attract like magnets. Yeah. And, I guess. Yeah. And maybe maybe you guys are also like crabs, like pulling each other down. Yeah. Well, for for, 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 for different reasons. Yeah, that's right. good. Due to the uh, the unfortunate uh, sexually transmitted disease that I have, <laughs> yeah. crabs. Those kind of crabs. Fully untreated right. crabs, yes. So yeah, it also tells tells us the Lanolax Corporation. So now I, ha- I know how to spell it. Yeah, it's just a nonsense yeah. word, yeah. It even says that you have been a guest on other podcasts. I have. Leading the Blind? <laughs> yeah, long, yeah. That was in 2017. That was a long time ago, yeah. Uh, a Pat Dean special, a hypothetical scenario discussion published on March 27th, 2020. That might be a different. Pat I don't Dean. know what that he's is. He's got an FPIA set too on YouTube from uh, we're talking about Trump pre-Trump. Yeah, I put, so there's this contest every year uh, called the funniest person in Fur- Austin. Furriest contest. pussy in Austin. Yes, <laughs> and so what I did is I just thought this would be funny. Uh, I I went to Cap City uh, and 
we, me and my friend Dustin, the guy who would film all the everyone's FPIA sets, we, I just wore the same clothing I wore the same night that I that I did it, and went up there and to a literal empty room because it was like two in the afternoon. Did a bunch of really bad Trump jokes okay. to dead silence, <laughs> and then we spliced it in, and then we would splice in actual shots from that night mm-hmm. of me from behind, so you can't see what I'm saying, but you see a full packed crowd. So it looks like it looks like me. Here bombing my dick off <laughs> but so confidently with such confidence not acknowledging that anything is going wrong just acting like i'm killing uh yeah and so i put it out years ago and like the number of people who thought it was real i i guess like i think everything is really obvious and i guess it's not mm-hmm. because some people were like dude that was so ballsy that you did that it's like i didn't actually do it yeah. <laughs> i just thought it would be stupid i'm going to fpia in a week because we have a young new kind of new town comedian heath underhill that comes on here a lot oh yeah and he's going to try it i think it's just a rite of passage have you ever done it yeah people come here and they feel like they have to at some point well you do I don't want to be the funniest person in a town. Why not? <laughs> it's not valuable. <laughs> I want to be. I want to have the funniest clips on the internet. Well, that's the fun. thing that's really <laughs> funny is that um, w- when you win the contest, um, you get money, and yeah. um, in years past, you would go to like JFL and stuff. And a lot of right. people, it's how they got management is yeah. that they they won or they did really well, and there was industry there, and, and they got management. And so. Um, can fucking, we have a drank the most beers at an open mic contest? That's what I'm <laughs> I've won so many of them then. But we, uh, I just uh, remember my buddy saying like, yeah, like the main thing after you win FPIA is that like, it just means you, you go last at every single showcase right. for the next year. And it kind of yeah. sucks. Yeah. You can't just duck out after you go third, no, which fucking right. rules. Nope. You got to wait the whole hour and a half. A lot of then, 1245 set times. I, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, what can you do though? I've gone, yeah, to support friends at it a bunch of times and been like, Yeah, I know you have to do this. We, yeah, we all have to go. Uh, so your AI summary says, note that Pat Dean's podcasting activities seem to focus on philosophical and creative endeavors with a mix of educational and entertaining content. So that's a pretty good sum- that's a pretty good summary of, like of what you've you. told us. I think AI yeah. is in love with yeah. you. Well, you know, I've been told that I'm very I come across very charming to robots. Yeah. So this could this makes sense. <laughs> so yeah, so the yeah, so the educational stuff is interesting to me because the educational stuff was uh, was Ben teaching me about philosophy while I try my absolute hardest to just make him angry yeah. because we've known each other for 25 years. So right. I, kn- I know how to make Ben angry, even yeah. though he knows <laughs> that I'm just trying to make him angry. Mm-hmm. Uh, he still gets mad. Uh, but the Patreon version of, of that that we did for a long time uh, was we flipped the script. And instead of me teaching him about philosophy, I just teach him about just whatever I just find interesting. Yeah. And so we actually learned a lot of shit through the Patreon more than the uh like okay, so he talk, talked about uh, goddamn Australia earlier. Do you guys know? Do you do you fuckers know about the the Great Emu War? <laughs> no, no. The Great Emu War was this thing I learned about for the podcast. So it, it's a real thing that happened. It was after I believe World War One. I, I want to say it could be World War Two. I could be. It was a long time ago when Are I learned you about it. Relaxing us right now. No, no, no. I promise. <laughs> so what happened was the fucking these Australians came back from a world war and they had like guns still. And then they came home, and then for whatever reason, this gigantic herd of emus were, like, destroying everybody's crops. Uh-huh. And so they were like, not not my watch, mate. Mm-hmm. And so they fought against the emus, and they ended up losing to the emus. Like, they lost the war. <laughs> like, And so eventually, the, I don't recall how it fully ended. I think eventually they Life, just left. Uh, but finds a way. But they couldn't beat these emus. And it was, like, this whole crazy adventure that Clever they had. Clever girl. They're all raptors. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Emus, well, are emus kind of aggressive and mean? Yeah. They say yeah. that There's dinosaurs... Like There's with a bone on the head that's like an emo variant in Papua New Guinea that just one-shots you. Really? They, yeah. they, can, they can kick you and like rip yeah, your stomach open. The, they have and, that thing. That they sucks. have the raptor thing. Yeah, yeah because long, dinosaurs long, yeah. Are, are, are... Birds come from dinosaurs, yeah. if you believe this, this Charles Darwin guy, yeah. <laughs> who I have a couple questions for, he, who will not debate me. I'd like to point that yeah. out. I don't believe in science. Will I've not. I've done my own research. I read one thing. Yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty smart. My I'm thing a doctor is, now. Okay, here's the problem. Just like everyone else after COVID. Yeah. An insta doctor. The problem with science is that a lot of people who are like really, really smart say that it's true. So I just go, okay, cool. I'll just believe you. Yeah. But I, because I can't understand it. I can't, there's a lot of shit in science and math. I'm just like, I don't, I can't wrap my brain around this. But for some reason, I'm believing in it. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of, it's, um, 
It's weird. I guess what I'm trying to say is someone needs to teach me science because I'm dying here. Science and law, <laughs> but the the goals of science and law are both to make findings, to dis- discovery, and 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 make a uh, you know precedent. Yeah, establish truth. Like get a foundation on so which. That's why religious people hate science and law because there's no not everything's supposed to be in flux, and you could just make up. Why is the sky blue? Well, Jesus. Well, okay, but I'll say this though: the thing that is good about science is also bad. The thing that's good about science is that. Tech, it's suppo- you're supposed to have an open mind about things and go, oh, this thing that we all thought was real, that's true, this scientific fact, it's, we were wrong about that. Here's what's actually true, which is good, but it's bad because to certain people, it sounds like bullshit. It yeah. sounds like, well, well, you well, thought this li- thing that right. was true, but now it's not. Yeah. So, you know, how, how do I know the new thing's true? You but know, how do we? That, yeah. That's right. the problem is right. that how do we? I don't yeah. know. Well, that's why anytime I see a good debate about that, it's like it's always evolving. Like what we understand is always evolving. And anything that we say is the current, it's what we currently are best understanding of something. And we're always improving and all that, right? Uh, the, um, the What I like to say to like certain family members maybe who don't believe in some really, really, really basic stuff that's kind of common sense at this point is okay. – um, Science is always trying to prove itself wrong. Yeah. A scientist is always trying to prove themselves wrong. That's the yeah. whole point of science but is always I have this thing I think, now let's prove it wrong, yeah. right? Hmm. And if you can't prove something wrong long enough, it becomes scientific theory. And that's what we consider a fact, right? So that's a completely alien concept to somebody who just lives and breathes religious belief because the religious belief is I'm right. This is the truth. This does not change because God doesn't change or whatever. Yeah. That's an alien concept to, you know, like uh, trying to constantly trying to prove myself wrong. What? You know, that's an alien concept to something like, no, God is forever and he's unchanging and this is all the way it's always been. And, you know, it's like it's it's the how locked down your your thoughts are, your mind is, right? I did a a deep dive into ancient Christianity and because I realized... Also known as Christianity. Yeah, but I didn't didn't realize, like... So, like, I was raised Catholic, and so you sort of assume that, like, oh, it's just been like this for the last Mm 2,000 years, and then, like, you learn about the beliefs of, like, early Christianity and stuff, and it's, like, fucking crazy. Like, (laughs) it's how different it was and how um, it took a few hundred years for some of the stuff that we just, is just dogma to us to become an actual Mm -hmm. fact to them. Mm -hmm. How before, and then, so it's, like, it's kind of weird to to look back on it. Yeah, and you had, like, even the people that I know who were incredibly, like, Protestant religious, I was raised back. Baptist or whatever I say well, <laughs> yeah those those idiots right uh, Christian I, rebels we call you <laughs> the, the the split off yeah they don't um uh they don't even have any they don't know that the bible was assembled by committee basically there were all kinds of things that they they debated on whether to include this one or that one and some of them that didn't get in there yeah I guarantee you that a lot of protestant people don't know that the catholic bible has four extra books that we've never heard of. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know that until I was way older. You know, I, didn't, I definitely didn't know it as a kid or any of that. Yeah. Nobody Catholics ever told me that. We're, we're, we're the first religion that has a bonus material. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but then you, get the, then you get the bad, like, Disney Star Wars sequel trilogy crap that is the Mormons. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> the fan fiction that they had at the Mormonism end. Mormonism and the history of it is the tightest shit ever. Oh, yeah. I fucking love these guys. Yeah. I didn't have much of an opinion on... I mean, I grew up with a lot of Mormon people, but I didn't know much about their religion until we had to do this podcast about it. Mm -hmm. And then I... We it would turn into a three part episode that we did because I was like, this is the tightest shit ever. There's an outer dark... That's creepy as fuck. Yeah, There's like different types of heavens. There's all kinds of... You got a planet... It's like 1800 sci-fi religion, right? Because I yeah, mean, yeah, we, the yeah, 20th yeah. century sci-fi religion is Scientology. Scientology, yeah. But how we understood like the world, things to be in the 1800s, that's the Mormon version. It's like, yeah, you get your own planet, um, all the crazy stuff about the um, the Nephites, which all sound kind of like aliens, like a like yeah. a, 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 a certain because they were the there there was like a, a tribe of of. Uh, from Israel that went across the land bridge because I guess they knew the, about the land bridge at the time. And then it went in and just all the, the John, uh, the, uh, Joseph Smith stuff is great. You've seen yeah. that South park uh-huh. episode, yeah. right? You know, it's, it's really, really interesting. And yeah, I grew up with Mormons and we were like, Oh yeah, they're, they're just those 
weird ones that um have the underwear. Like we didn't know anything specific about. Although we would constantly get the commercials saying, "Hey, check out the Book of Mormon" or whatever. But I we never like thought about it. But sure. now with the internet, you can read all about it. Well, the thing that's so interesting about Mormons is that like. So when you when you meet them now, for the most part, they're they're they really are like just very nice people, very oh, oh very yeah. giving, very whatever. But like the early Mormons were all these just like crazy eyed psychos who were like frontiersmen. And mm-hmm. you had to be insane to be a frontiersman back then. They're like and, youth group adults. <laughs> well, they're like youth group adults, but also who could like beat your ass. Yeah. Like they had to live off the land and, yeah. and everyone was Amish. trying to kill them all they're the like time. Amish levels of stocky. They were like total yeah. badasses and then wh- they fuck those aliens i hope someone <laughs> did place. my my theory here's my theory on mormons is that the reason they're as nice as they are is because they were so mistrusted for the first like hundred years of their existence that i think it was i think they like were just adaptation like, here's what we're gonna do <laughs> yeah yeah we're gonna adapt we're gonna not only are we gonna be like we're going to fully integrate into American society, but we're going to do it with a fucking smile on our face. We're going to yeah. be so nice to you. Mm-hmm. And like that, you have to like us. And then They're over time, kindness. it just, yeah, killing us kindness. And then over time, it just turned into how they naturally are. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. They lied to themselves long enough that it became the truth. It became real. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's how I get over a breakup. Like, I don't love her. I don't love her. Yeah. I don't care. And a year later, you're like, oh, yeah, I don't. Actually, don't you fake it till you make it. Not sad anymore. Yeah. But the so Bible I have to tell rules. you guys about some stuff that bothered me over the last week. Go. Uh, I was in traffic. There was a lady behind me freaking out. It was one of those right turn lanes and straight, and I wasn't really paying attention. When I commute in the morning, I'm just drinking coffee. I have to go to Highland from here. So I just go through town and drink coffee because it's going to be either an hour on the highway or an hour in the town. Sure. So I just squirrely around through the town and have a night. try to have a nice drive. We were talking about traffic earlier in this town. This is the first place I ever saw someone taking a Sunday drive. That's unheard of on the East Coast. No, Nobody never. takes a drive for fun. No. I saw somebody doing it here in a classic car, and I was like, oh, hell yeah, Texas. Yeah. He's got his truck. He only drives it on Sundays. <laughs> That's how I get to work every day. Otherwise, I'm going to be miserable in traffic like our fathers, white-knuckling it on the Beltway, angry at what Rush, Rush Limbaugh is telling them. Mm-hmm. Right. So this lady behind me is freaking out at a light. I was stopped. I didn't turn right. She needed to turn right. She had her signal on too late. She didn't put her signal on. So I didn't know. Otherwise, I would have got over. You know, you see somebody behind you like that that's freaking out, and you're like, you should have used your turn signal. Yep. So she's like banging on the wheel and huffing and puffing, and her window's open and my window's open. She's behind me, and she's looking clearly at my face in my passenger rearview mirror, and I go, you need to calm down. And she put her head in her, fa- in her, head in her hands and started crying. Jeez. And I was like, women don't like to get call- told calm down by dudes the same way like meth heads don't want to hear it from cops. No. <laughs> like, it's too late. Yeah, they really don't like it. By the time it. you say calm down, that's probably the worst thing you could have said at that time. One time I was, I was talking to this girl, I told her to calm down, uh, and she shot me in the head. <laughs> <laughs> that's how mad they get. That'll happen. Twice. Yeah. Two well, times, right in the fucking in the. It's it's why I'm as good at stand up as I am. Yeah, is that she destroyed a certain part of my brain filter? Yeah, and that just made me into such a hilarious comedian. I had a it girl explains everything. That asked me if I had fucked anyone else when we were breaking up, and I said no comment. And she came at me with these crazy haymakers, <laughs> and we had been taking boxing together. So in oh head, no, so like, she knew how to do it. Yeah, I was like, you forgot all your training. You're not jabbing or anything. She was just <laughs> overhand haymakers. And was there was no thought. Out. There was no strategy. There. She forgot all her training. That's but she's yeah. pale, and I'm like I am. And I had a buddy that had just been locked up for a month with these guys who said. My girlfriend started hitting me. I was blocking. The cops came. She had bruises. I didn't. So I went to jail. Oh, shit. So she's pale girls hitting me like this, and I'm blocking, and I'm like, she's going to have bruises, and I'm going to get... So I had, to, I had to jump off the balcony into the creek to get out. She blocked the door like a telenovela. Oh. Wow. And you escaped in the creek? Yeah. It was over uh, at IHOP on Mopac next to the, the Greenbelt, the Taco Deli. Okay. That's the first apartment that I had here. I moved here with a girl. I shouldn't have done that. That was a bad. I should have just. But look where here. it's gotten you now. Yeah. Well, he uh, yeah, he 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 way. actually he found himself on DontDateHimGirl.com yeah. because of her. Yeah, You've heard of that, right? Post. Heard of what? DontDateHimGirl.com. Oh, I know. I thought you were making something. No, up. it's That's like real. it's like the, it's like the vindictive ex-girlfriend database of guys. It was really. I taken down because some girl put a lawyer on there and he 
got it went after them yeah yeah so and there, there was like i mean hundreds of thousands of women were on this site Whoa. and it was basically there was a there it was a site where they could post their ex-boyfriend saying don't and i i assume oh, i don't assume i know that there were some legitimate guys that could be put on there sure, that women yeah. should avoid right we all know that well no girl should ever date any guy so yeah <laughs> <laughs> i have a daughter sorry yeah <laughs> fair years. enough fair enough <laughs> But uh, obviously, there were some who were like, he was an asshole, and you know, a lot of uh, exaggeration or making things up or okay. whatever. Yeah. yeah. So he found, yeah, he found himself because of the girl that he moved here with. Uh, Man. It was because I was messaging other girls, and one of them found that and said, Is this you? And I was like, Fuck. Was one of her complaints about you that you're always jumping off balconies into creeks? <laughs> <laughs> He's just trying to get away. He's, He's always trying always, to get away. Whenever I ask him a question, he just jumps off the balcony into the goddamn creek. <laughs> so then, uh, yeah, here's another thing that bothered me this week. We went out to, uh, for lunch. We had a field day at work. We got to do some field stuff. So we stopped and had lunch at a pretty nice place. We had a group on. And the waitress came up, and she was like, are you guys celebrating anything? And they were like, yeah, Josh might get a promotion. And she was like, I'm screaming. Congratulations. I hope you get it. And I, I've seen people write, <laughs> I'm screaming, on like TikTok or whatever. But I've never had someone verbally say it to my face. No, I've never. I guess I'll. Yeah, I never have either. And I was like, you're not. No, you're not. You're a liar is what you are, ma'am. Did you ask to speak to the manager? (laughs) I would have immediately. And then I saw a dad pushing a a trike bike and holding his kid at the same time. And he looked so pissed. And I've been there. Like, I'll take. We we got all these dumb guys. His wife. Here's what happened. This is what happened to me. His wife went on some Montessori site and saw this weird push scooter. Okay. It was like, the baby needs this for spatial whatever. <laughs> and so then you push the baby down the road on it until they scream for you to pick them up. And then you have to walk it back and hold the baby from wherever you're at where the kid didn't want to ride it anymore. Dang. So, I mean, I've done it. I've been there. But I never realized. I looked at the dad. He looked super pissed. And I was like, yeah, because you fucking wasted money. But the kid was so happy. He was grinning. Because that's all the kid wants is to be on dad's level and be up there with the giant. Sure. And get held. And yeah. Walk. I think like, we, we forget how big everything is to little kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Being on a midget scooter, like a baby, it's like being a retarded midget in traffic. Like you're <laughs> right on the curb next to the cars. You don't, your dad's not holding you. And you're just moving on wheels like along with cars. Like, oh my God, what the hell? I just want to be picked up. Yeah. So now I understand, you know. I still say it to my dad. Daddy, I just me. want to be picked up. And he's like, you weigh like 200 and something. And I'm like, well, pick me up, you fucking wuss. And I was like, Don't you lift, bro? Yeah. I need Come to on. be held right now. Pat, I'm not actually your dad. I'm just some guy that you know. <laughs> this is Why are you calling me your dad? This is getting creepy. I'm just crying. This is the DMV. You followed me home from the park. Come on. <laughs> this is DPS. You're getting a driver's license. Fuck yeah, I am. So we were, uh, Donnie's pet peeve is when a couple say we're pregnant yeah okay that's the, the worst is, thing in the world oh so you're you you are two women who have who have uh, babies growing in your uteruses yes yeah yes. but it could work if you're the queen yeah, yeah. And you've, you've the, royal the royal we are pregnant oh, yeah okay right, yeah right. the queen could definitely do or that. if you well, use also, they them pronouns then we're yeah, I pregnant guess you could do that yeah <laughs> uh, yeah if you refer uh, basically if you have to refer to yourself as a plural person right huh yeah we the royal we are pregnant mm-hmm. or they them are pregnant I had to look up a word because of porn. I kept seeing this word, pine, P-I-N-A-Y. A-Y. What is that? It's a Filipino woman. Oh, it's like pe- a feminine. A pine? Of, pine? Yeah. You know, I've heard a lot of stuff about I was these. scared to look it up. I, don't want, I wasn't sure if I yeah. wanted to know what a pine was. I've heard a lot of stuff about these Filipino women. Yeah. And I, I can't say it's, I was on a different podcast actually, and they they were like, I they said something about a Filipino woman. So, like, so you know what that means? And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I think it, there's a lot of, I guess, things about these women that I know nothing about. So, if there's anyone listening who is of uh, Filipino descent, or maybe you just look like you are, hey, hit me up and let's try to figure something out because I got questions. Needs to be exposed to the culture. I need, I need some more. People are always telling me I need more culture in my life. Yeah. And now I've decided to follow the Filipino way of life. You got a you got a you podcast want, to make about it. You I, want yeah, a <laughs> trying to get yourself one of them pine girls. Guys, I've, I've, <laughs> I've, I've, I've had so many podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> They've all gone nowhere. <laughs> so uh, uh, I, you know, um, we did stand up 
what, 12 years ago now, um, I got tired. I, I couldn't, I just got tired of bombing. So I was like, I'm just going to go be on a podcast. <laughs> yeah. There's no such thing as a failed comedian. We watch them all fail over and over yeah, again right, every night. Right. You're just oh my to keep God. failing. Yeah. Failing upwards. So, yeah. So yeah, we did a podcast called Drunk Cast. It was on the uh, it was on the deck at Don's Depot. I do remember this actually. And then uh, Ben Sherlock showed up. Yeah. Uh, Why does Ben keep popping up in this podcast? Peasy was on pissed. there. A bunch yeah. Of people came yeah, out. I remember that. Yeah, and uh, so I was that that was for the first like two or three years. I was one of the regulars on that podcast. And Fuck then, yeah. Um, uh, I went on there three or four times. Yeah, and then we then uh, they got. <laughs> I I specifically remember they got press passes to Moon Tower. And then Travis, the host, was like all about just bringing on comedians after after that. Um, and um, it's like uh, there was one time we had a uh, Martin Urbano on, and oh, he was sure. like, "Oh, I'm I'm moving to New York in a couple weeks." And then six months later, he's on Kimmel. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we had Doug Mellard on there at one point. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. And uh, Vanessa Gonzalez was uh, on there. And then uh, towards the end, Avery Moore and Ariel Isaac Norman were regulars on it. Oh, so, cool. Yeah. So oh. it was it was really fun. But they they kind of they. St- Kind of stopped doing it right before COVID, and I they changed the name of the show uh, to Content Pending and and all that. I still talk to Travis every once in a while, but I think he's uh, since COVID he's pretty much just locked himself in his house. Like most people, fair enough. Done. A lot of people, man, a lot of people who used to do um, stand up or podcasts or things like that. Yeah, they all uh, not all of them, but a lot of them stopped doing it after. Yeah. after I think the pandemic what was interesting about it is that it gave a lot of. I'm not saying this is what happened with him but mm-hmm. it gave a lot of people uh excuses like excuses to quit right where right. it's like you can't if someone stops doing comedy like people are like you fucking believe this for they quit what the yeah. fuck like and so this kind of gave i think some people a, a like a non-judgmental way to just sort of mm-hmm. just to just not come back i got a uh, covid last month fuck from yeah. port aransas from a pizza buffet full of children touching all the slices they had oh, ta- it was all trump flags in the parking lot sure and the children touching stuff. And I was like, I didn't even know there was a, like a resurgence or whatever. Or I got yelled at online for saying that. It's not a pandemic anymore. It's endemic now. And it's been here all along or whatever. I don't care. I, never I didn't get it for four years. So I stopped getting boosters. I thought it was chilled out. It was the worst. I didn't get it the first time. This is my first time getting COVID was last month. Oh, okay. So I had five different days of nausea, aches, diarrhea, headache, a weakness. It was like a variety pack of fun. Okay. Until the end when I just had sniffles and I was like, okay, I'm going to time travel with, with NyQuil to three days from now. Oh, hell yeah. And it'll be over. But I still now, ever since then, I wake up, everything hurts. I think it kick-started my being old. Like, you hear about being old, you wake up and everything hurts and it sucks. And I, that hadn't happened yet. But I think long COVID for me is now that I'm just old and everything hurts. Yeah, maybe. Which I, so I might as well just drink and have a hangover. Right. No, it's it's not that. you getting older. It's COVID. That's yeah. what it is. No, I get what you're saying. Have you heard about Bangladesh? What's happening in Bangladesh right now? Bangladesh. Uh, what happened? Was the there cops are shooting the people? For there's what? A, there's a work riots about. There's government jobs and there's a quota, and they've been sitting on a couple of them and not filling them. At like 50 positions and everybody. The college students got mad and protested in the streets. It was a protest until it moved into the right of way and then it became a demonstration and the cops started shooting them. So there's like pictures of spray paint where it's like, who do you call when the cops murder? Who watches the watchman? Yeah. Yes. And so they sh- last week they shut down the entire internet. So nobody knows what's even going on with anybody in the whole country. It's crazy that there's countries where there's just no internet. Yeah. Isn't China like that? Or, or don't they? Well, they China they kinda... has, they, they, you can only be on their internet. You can't get out to the outside world from China. That's the, what they call it, the Great Firewall. Um, they have their technology. <laughs> what? Is, yeah, their, their technology is so they have everything locked down so much that there's a Chinese version of of chat. There's a Chinese version of like social media, Facebook type things. Hmm. There's so many things. They're they're they are completely isolated from the rest of the like world. You're looking at your monitor and then it, it slants down. Yeah. What, <laughs> what about it. Domino's Pizza? Is that still available? That maybe Domino's dot com. Uh, it, it's there's probably, it's probably the the Chinese version of Domino's, a completely different thing. <laughs> I'll love Mahjong. It yeah. Don't worry. I'll yeah. figure Mahjong it out. Pizza. <laughs> it's like Domino's. Yeah. It's Baccarat Pizza. <laughs> Um, <laughs> no, I had friends in the hurricanes in St. John's that they, everything went down and we just had to wait Dang. To, to hear if they were alive for a couple of days. Jesus. Because the whole shit got ravaged and it was, you know, then Facebook chimed in three days later and it, they were saying, we will rebuild. And I was like, okay, he's alive. That's good. 
What do you what do you call their people? bar was gone? Like all the beach bars that they went to were just completely gone. So do you call people from Bangladesh? Are they Bangladeshi? Bangladeshi. Is that what it yeah. is? I just realized I have no idea what it is. Yeah, yeah. Well, shout out to all the bla- the Bangladeshis. Mm-hmm. What's up, gang? Yeah, I hope you guys are doing okay. Hope you're doing okay. Hope you were not shot by your own police force. That I don't would understand suck. how 50 government jobs turned into a college protest turned into fucking martial law. But yeah, it has dom- well again yeah, dominoes. Just a different kind this time. I mean, you've seen those no, kind of not quite as delicious kind. It's like those two guys arguing in traffic on YouTube. Fuck you, push it, beg your butt. Yeah, butter. yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've seen that. It escalates quickly. <laughs> Go take fuck. Have yeah. you seen the trip movies with Steve Coogan? The tri- um, trip I know what they place, are. I've seen to- like clips of it. Is that the one where they're doing dueling Michael Caines or whatever? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've seen parts of it. I haven't seen all of it. This is my comedy dream to have a show where I just drive around with my friends and talk shit and and travel. I mean, it's like comedians in cars getting coffee, but it's just two pros that have been friends. They're mostly they're giving each other shit about their careers and how who's gotten what award and stuff. But they go to Greece, they go to Italy. They, I think these are the best comedy movies of all time. It's some, imp- I'm sure it's some of it staged, but then they also eat really good food and they they do foodie stuff. They kind of play themselves, right? Yeah, they're just having an awesome time, and it's on camera. And it's for some reason a movie. Yeah. Huh. Somebody found these two guys, and it looks like they would have been doing this anyway. And they put a camera on it, and they're like, "This is great. Dang, we need to document this." But there's four of them. There's the trip, which is in northern England, then trip to Greece, trip to Italy, trip to Spain. They're all on different streamers, but I wish they put them all in one place. Someone needs to document all the cool stuff I do. I do a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. Today, I I woke up, so mm-hmm. already pretty goddamn cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, Girls get it done. Yep. I drank. <laughs> some coffee i ate a bagel and then i did some stuff on the computer which while it doesn't look does it look exciting no does it feel exciting no and then i came here so i feel like i bet you said some cool stuff you probably talked some shit to your coffee or whatever no <laughs> Donnie no yells, I, Donnie I, I, yells I try at inanimate objects in here all day long yeah no i, I try <laughs> I, I try to reserve my rage for uh <laughs> you know things that are flesh and blood yeah. yeah. See, that's my thing is that I, I turn my rage at things that are flesh and blood onto inanimate objects when they act like pieces of shit and refuse to cooperate. Yeah. I was telling yeah. the other day that, that like the only thing that would make like bashing my coffee table with a baseball bat when I stub my toe on it feel better would be if it cried afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I don't do. That's how I don't go to jail. That's how I don't do that to people. Is I just do it to my coffee table. Maybe you could like get like a sampler and like sample a bunch of different sounds of 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 humans Uh, uh, crying in pain. I mean, we have the technology. We do. You could do that. We could do this. Yeah. yeah. Large trash pickup uh, once a month around here. People out in Circle C put nice furniture out on the curb. Take the truck and go pick it up. We smash it in the backyard and pretend it's yours. And then yeah. what we could also do like is we could also space. use those bats on those people too. So we not Which only do we destroy, people? yeah, not only do we destroy <laughs> their uh, furniture, we also destroy their futures. Yeah, yeah. we we're taking it back. It's yeah. like it's, it's how we it's it, that that's the form that the revolution is going to have to take because the proletariat will never rise up. You know, we have to be the ones that we have to be the ones that go. We have to go into Circle C and we have to teach them a lesson with Fuck their own yeah. furniture. Sure. Well, look. I guarantee you one of those people did something bad in their life. Yeah. So they probably deserve to yeah. be beaten in public with a baseball bat. I mean, their their stocks are paying for like uh, slavery oh, in China, making iPhones yeah. and stuff. Like there's a, there, we, could, we could justify it easily. You're making a pretty yeah. solid case. Easily justify You guys it. are basically quoting scripture. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory yeah. that they deserve. Fuck yeah, we're, yeah, we we're gonna yeah f- they deserve to die. I hope they burn to hell. <laughs> we're going to force that camel through the eye of that needle <laughs> one oh, way or shit. another. One way or another. So you Donnie know, saw a Deadpool last night. Oh, I'm seeing it yeah, tomorrow with my things, brother yeah. Kevin. Okay, yeah. no spoilers. Kevin Dean. It was, would you say it good? Yes. I thought it was good, and uh, there was a lot of cool Wolverine stuff that we haven't gotten to see yet, even oh, though we've cool. had so many Wolverine movies. There was a lot of neat comic book Wolverine stuff. Well, yeah. the thing with, with Wolverine is that, like, he's he's a really good Wolverine, but there's only, like, he's only been in, like, two good <laughs> actual movies as <laughs> right. Wolverine. Like, All the, I wanted when I was little was a Wolverine movie, and now there's, like, eight of them. Yeah, it's pretty tight. I mean, I grew up a huge comic book guy. I still am a big comic book yeah. guy. Uh, so it's cool to, to 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 see. But yeah, it's kind of weird that it took as long as it did. Because he Simon? came out in 1975, I think, Wolverine. And the first X-Men movie was like 25 years later. It's kind of weird it took that long. I got back into comics during COVID. Because oh, yeah? it was uh, 
I mean, I would have got back into comedy when you're the rule is. So I took a break to raise children, and now first mistake. Now they're perfect, so I can do comedy again. <laughs> I finished raising. You've them. just done. Yeah. So I have completed. But the, what I hear from other parents is that when your youngest turns eight, you can get your hobbies back. My youngest turned eight during COVID, so I just started playing guitar and, and collecting comics. I got into Saga, Low. Have you heard of Low? Oh, Saga's amazing. Low, I don't know if I know that one. It's like, it's like Saga. It's uh, everybody has to live under the ocean because the sun's burning everything, and it's way in the future. Oh, it's okay. Really cool. Who uh, made it? Uh, Greg, no, uh, I'll send it to you. It's some Italian guy. It's every frame is painted really nicely. Oh, cool. It's really good style. And uh, yeah, I got Berserker, that, that Keanu Reeves one. I got into Monstrous around that time. What is Monstrous? Oh, my God. It has some of the most amazing art. The Um, Last God was good. Yeah, Last God has really amazing art. There's a lot of those. Yeah, I'll I'll show you some uh, some Monstrous. uh, Fuck yeah. And then I got into uh, Mobius, back into Mobius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Collected stuff from from big, thick ones from from Amazon just to look at it. But then it ends up being pretty good. And uh, what's the guy's hard-boiled samurai cowboy Greg... He's super hyper detailed. He did Big Guy and Rusty. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember his name right now. It's Gary or Greg something. He, but he does. Oh, really... it's Gary Sinise. Yes, the actor. exactly. <laughs> Lieutenant Dan. Lieutenant yeah. Dan himself. Yeah. So apparently Ryan Reynolds is going to. We're getting into nerd news now. Sorry. Sure. Ryan Reynolds was in talks to do a Dragon's Lair movie. That might work. Uh, recently. Like, that's the thing, though, is that they're. they're for t- 25 years, I've been reading rumored movies starring certain people. So, yeah. like, you know, there was a Dungeons and Dragons movie rumored forever. And then there, a crappy one came out. Yeah, I remember that and one. And there was, they worked that new Dungeons and Dragons movie, which is awesome. By I didn't the way. see the new one. I rewatched it uh, the other night while I was putting up these shelves. I've added some shelves to the studio here. Uh, but, um, uh, I, I saw it when it, like, came out on streaming, and I thought it was really good. And I went back and watched it just now, and I was like, I just forgot how good it is. It's really well. It's it's almost an Edgar Wright movie. Okay. It's, it's almost that like tight of a script. I'll have to check it out then. Yeah, um, it's really good. You know what movie, even though it shouldn't have been because it was so like, uh, just they got everything about, not everything, but they got a lot about the character wrong, is uh, what's really good is that fucking... Keanu Reeves, uh, John Constantine. Yeah, the movie. Constantine, the, the Keanu Reeves Constantine good. was a really good movie. I yeah. mean, it's it's way different from how it should be. I get why there's like nerds who don't like it because he's American and not British, but like in the movie, but like it's fucking great. Jeff Darrow, Jeff Darrow, and Frank Miller did Hard, hard Boiled. Oh, okay. It's kind of a Blade Runner esque. Frank cop Miller who might be a robot or not. You know? Crazed comic book creator Frank Miller. Yeah, did yep. that movie that he just made about himself called American Genius. <laughs> <laughs> It was here. He came here with uh, Rose, whatever, the hot girl from Sin City. Is that real? American genius? I mean, he participated in it. I don't know. I would, you know, if they were going to make a movie about me, I'd ask them not to call it that. Yeah. You'd, you'd call it American super <laughs> But he's genius. also going to die like in a month. So Yeah. He's not well. Uh, I think he has like cancer or something. Yeah. But there, I, I don't think there's any reason to make a Dragon's Lair movie. You could just post a speed run of the game. It's a well animated <laughs> cartoon. It's a cartoon, yeah. Yeah, but yeah I mean, I've, I, I remember going to like, a, uh, do you remember Dark Horizons, the, the, the website that was all like movie nerd news and rumors and all that? Uh, that was, no, I don't believe there so. Was, uh, this was late 90s, early 2000s. There was always, oh, there's a rumored, you know, Spider Man movie directed by James Cameron. Yeah. So yeah. you would, you would, I've been following these rumors of all these things for so many years that, like, now anytime I see, like, especially on social media, like hype for something that's coming out, I'm like, uh, is this actually going to happen or not? Because we know how development hell goes and all that. Right? Wasn't Dragon's Lair like Ralph Boxy or, or Bloom? animation it was the same people that did american tale i think that animated the arcade game have they ever made a pong movie just wimbledon just watch yeah <laughs> tennis <laughs> so did you ever go to linda carter's house in langley you know she lived there wonder woman no I, I i know that um michael jordan had a home there i didn't know that linda carter did is that her name I yeah, get it wrong. yeah linda carter is wonder woman yeah original she wonder lives woman. in langley she has a horse ranch it's Don Bluth, by the way, was Don the dragon slayer. You were, you were right. Yeah, yeah. So I wish I knew that. I would have went over to hang out with her. We stopped there <laughs> by accident on the way home from DC because we had a pit piss so bad. I had a piss so bad. One, t- you know, we used to go downtown all the time. It's forty minutes from Reston, and when you're 21, you're drinking. You don't 
you don't want to break the seal because then you got to pee all the time. You're trying to talk to a girl. Yeah. So I didn't break the seal the whole time. And then we got in the car and came home and it was just burning. And then I peed when I got home. And from that point on for like five years, if I had to pee, I had to pee immediately. Oh, wow. I I broke my buffer window. of (laughs) You don't really have to pee yet. Whatever that is. So we were driving home after that, which is me and my buddy, Matt. And I was like, oh, I got to pee right now. I got to pull over. So I pulled over in Langley. Got out of the truck, started peeing by the car, and his horse came up, and my buddy was passed out, and his window was open. He, like, opened the window and looked at the stars and passed out with the wind. So I was peeing behind the car. The horse came up and put its head in the car. <laughs> like, well, because he was snoring. So I think the horse was curious. He woke up drunk at Wonder Woman's driveway to a horse in his face going, <laughs> And he was like, God, what the fuck? Jeez. And I was peeing, so I turned, I peed on the horse, and I peed on the electric fence. Oh, no. It was, like, it was just an immediate disaster. Everything went wrong at once. Don't whiz in the electric fence. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Luckily, we got out of there before we got arrested by Wonder Woman's security team. Do you know, so in Northern Virginia, there's a few different urban legends. Yeah. Do you know about uh, Midgetville? No, I know about the Bunny Man. The Bunny Man Bridge, yeah, is, is a shot famous by that one. Guy. He had a salt, salt gun. Is a fa- yeah, it's a famous one. So Midgetville was this place in uh, China. Vienna, Virgi- <laughs> Vienna in, in Northern Virginia, where it was a. The, 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 I've heard very uh, uh, various reasons for for why this would be, but it's at the end they, of a rainbow. <laughs> There was gold coins everywhere. It was so basically it's a bunch of like homes that are like smaller than normal. Yeah. And so the stories that came from that are, you know, it's a place where uh, a bunch of retired circus workers yeah. went to. Uh, there, were, uh, uh, there was one where there was a train wreck and the only survivors were the were the, the little people in the in the fucking circus. So they yeah. moved there. And it turns the out that from Wizard of Oz. Yeah. yeah, it turns out it was just they just built those houses a long time ago. Yeah. And so that's why they're as small as they are. Yeah. But it turned into this thing oh, where people this. would like drive there because they're like, that's where all the midgets live. Yeah. And so yeah. they'd go there and the people who live there were not happy about this. They would yeah. like chase you out. and st- yeah. They got very mad at you. But the, well, that, that probably like creates they, even more urban legends. Yeah, almost about like there was life. some yeah. secret they were hiding. Yeah, right. <laughs> the pot wow. of gold. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> was uh, Virginia where the Mothman thing happened, or was that was that like must, it could have been southern? I think it was somewhere Mo- on the in that area. The Mothman was that New Jersey? Uh, well, or that, no, was that was the, was Jersey, the New Devil. Jersey Devil. Yeah, um, maybe it did happen in in uh, in that area. I feel like it was like Falls Church or something. It was Falls a Church plantation. Uh, West Virginian fo- Point Pleasant is where it was. Oh, I don't in know what West that Virginia? is. Uh, in West Virginia, yeah. Oh, in, well, West, Virginia. West Virginian yeah. folklore. Like something you come yeah. up with on too much moonshine. Here's my I'm saying the mouth, man. Yeah. Oh, it, so it was, excuse yeah, it was me. Virginia. I'm from West Virginia. I'm trying to fuck <laughs> my sister in this moth. Guy. Where's the caviar? I'm from West Virginia. <laughs> it's Mid Atlantic. That's, that's the thing that's so weird is that West Virginia is like the banging your sister backwards, coal miners, whatever. But they're the ones who. St- Broke off from Virginia to stay in the Union. Yeah, they didn't want yeah. that. Doesn't make any sense. Yeah, and now when you go there, it's just all Confederate flags everywhere. Yeah, right. There's a lot of wow. stuff fucking dumb are you people. It doesn't make any sense. They used to right. go there to get bongs and porn. Yeah. Because they didn't have it in, D- in Virginia. That's where all the bachelor parties were. I have a 14 year old daughter. So this morning I came down and asked her what the fuck a glizzy is. And she was like, it's a hot dog. And I was like, I know it's a hot dog, but I thought there was something special about it. Like, it's a cheesy hot dog. And she's like, no. And she's texting her friend. Like, I know all her friends because I drive them around all the time. Sure. And her friend was like, can you put him down, please? It's time for him to die. And I was <laughs> like, yo, I don't have a Costco car, but I can get you in for a glizzy on the low low. And he was like, please make him stop. Please make the old man stop saying glizzy. Yeah. Saying <laughs> slang words to young kids is, is, is will never not be hilarious. <laughs> yeah. But you get, they get so mad. Yeah. <laughs> it's ours. You're not allowed to say. I'm going to just start busting. That's how you that's how you ruin slang, though. Yeah. That's that is the cycle of slang yeah. is the kids start saying it and their parents start saying it to piss them off. So they stop saying it. That's like the cycle of how it all goes. Right. The next time I have to drive them around, it's just going to be Bill and Ted's the whole time. Not bogus. <laughs> Everything. Tubular. <laughs> radical. So yeah. I love doing it. To, I have uh, I have 13 children. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> and they're all the same age. And I yeah, I just constantly I'm using slang to them. They get pimp. so pissed off. Such a pimp. You fucked 
13 girls 13 on same, different on the women same day. on the same weekend yeah. <laughs> yeah. and uh and they're You're all, a they're all named summer. patrick that old patrick's <laughs> brat boy summer hey man what can i say that was one heck of a weekend it cost of, me a lot of money in the long run i, I i'll tell you this 2011 as fun summer as 2011 was a lot of fun huh? as fun as it sounds i do not recommend impregnating 13 different women at the same time they it all, really leads to a lot of complications mm-hmm. both that, emotionally and financially that to be honest with you, I'm still sort of paying the, uh, the repercussions from. Yeah. 50 years from now, there's going to be a midget town in Texas where they all live. <laughs> I'm going to found a new one because they tore down. Get off my property. They, yeah, they, they tore down all of those <laughs> small houses, so they're not there anymore. Maybe I can like start like a new colony here or something. So Donnie said he doesn't like uh, We were talking about the new Crow movie, of course. And it's got Dua, not Dua Lipa. What's no, it's FKA uh, Twigs. FKA Twigs, yeah. He's like, I don't like her. Her mouth is stupid. Yeah. So we started attributing personality features to, to body parts. Sure. Her ears are retarded. I don't like her. Yeah. And then last night, my wife hit me with, she doesn't like Ben Affleck because he has an untrustworthy chin. <laughs> <laughs> what is For that Batman, mean? I mean, it's important to have a trustworthy yeah, chin. Yeah, you got to trust that chin. Right? What did you guys think about Ben Affleck as Batman? Bad. It, the movie was bad, but um, anything they did after Christian Bale was so like just Nolan. I actually didn't mind Affleck as yeah, Batman, as like it. kind of a Dark Knight Returns ish yeah, style Batman, but that movie was so bad around it that I didn't yeah, care. Robert okay, Rodriguez and Frank Miller had already done two good movies together. Why could they not just do TDKR? The thing is that the fucking so the movies are bad. However, the thing with him is that I kind of like a kind of older borderline functioning alcoholic Bruce yeah. Wayne that he did. Yeah. And the thing I also liked about it is he, you could actually see what's happening in his Batman fights yeah. as yeah. opposed to Christopher Nolan, which is using good, yeah. camera angles yeah. from all over. You don't that know was the one thing on. that whenever he had to bust into that warehouse, that and was so save, cool. What's her name? His it was mom. So bright. You saw everything. And, and it reminded me a lot of the Arkham games, Arkham. actually like the Arkham Asylum and all those Batman uh, games where you're, yeah, you know that that um, you hit a button for the guy behind you and the guy in front. Yeah. of Yeah, and it was and like had the it, really it good was line. like how it was it was a perfect illustration of how a Batman fight would go yeah. according to the comics. And you he, know? he had like his his bat um batter not the batarang but the fucking cable that he would use to like yeah, the grapple hook. Yeah, yeah, he would use that offensively. Yeah, yeah I, I kind of liked it. The movies are uh yeah very bad. Uh, well, if but, they had to exist for us to get flashing, what's your power? And him going, I'm rich. That was good. Yeah. That, yeah. that justified a lot of it. That but, uh, just the Justice League defied a lot of it. I went and saw a. Um, I went and saw Batman versus Superman with my friend Jason, who's he's he's been a guest on the show. He's way into comics, um, always has been. And about halfway through Batman versus Superman, I just leaned over. It's like so Batman just kills people now. Yeah, it's weird. I mean, he just kills people yeah. in that yeah. in that movie. He kills people, multiple um, people. Yeah, I mean, he didn't kill people even in the Dark Knight Returns. No. Right? He was a little more brutal in the Dark Knight Returns, but he uh, the Joker won from Dark Knight. Yeah, I'm going to make you break your rule. Two movies from now, yeah, <laughs> and right. start killing right. people. So on the subject, uh, what is your favorite comic book movie of all of them? Okay, so if we're talking about like superhero comic books, um, you know, I would still have to say the original Spider-Man Two with Doc Ock. Okay, yeah, that was like good. that was a very, very good. Yeah, uh, it was the Empire Strikes Back of that. Yeah, yeah, it was so fucking good. And then, yeah. um, as far as just like something that's uh, based off the comic based format, off the comic like, book, yeah. yeah um, Jeez, I don't know. I would have to think about that. Uh, a non-superhero comic book. Well, I'll tell you this. They're apparently adapting uh, Ed Brubaker's uh, criminal comic book. Okay. I don't know if you ever read that, no, I didn't. but it is fucking good. Okay. And uh, I'm looking forward to that if that happens. Have you been to the new shop, Bat City and Brody? I've passed it. Yeah. Is that, that new? Yeah. Okay, because I was wondering it was if it was new. Less, I, like I passed by it, and I was like, I feel like I would know that there you was a comic book store here. You can park at Daiso, like this side of, of Brody, and walk around to that strip mall without doing the whole Mopac, Ben White, you know, Oak Hill U-turn bullshit. Sure. You get it, so it's easy to get to. It's nice. They've got a lot of, they have a lot of printed posters of famous comic book covers that you won't find anywhere else. Oh, okay. That's fucking they rad. They've got a rack of those, and they're all like eight bucks because they made them all themselves. But yeah, Comic-Con is happening currently. Have you been paying attention to any of this? The news. No. Usually, it's a big, yeah. a big deal. 
there's going to be a boys spinoff. There's some, and then the Olympics is happening. It's called the girls. Yeah. <laughs> the they, thems. It's the we're the pregnant. The yeah. <laughs> the boys are pregnant. <laughs> and there's, yeah, there's going to be a Rick and Morty anime. I don't know. I haven't heard, right? I haven't heard any comic book news from a comic con. There never is. Yeah. It's always it's movies. It's well, that's what it's, it's It's basically become nerd pop culture con. Yeah. But sometimes the, the, they'll have people there where you're like, why are you here? Like, like yeah. this isn't nerdy. Yeah, like, right. what? Yeah, it's just, it's just a cultural thing now. It's like a pop culture thing now. It, it's it's definitely not what it was in the 90s. You no, know? no. Um, and also, well, also the entire comic book industry is not what it was i mean it's oh yeah it's completely different it's, and uh i mean there, we could we could talk for hours about the issues facing the comic book industry but i mean the big one now is that all the kids that i know the you know who, who was always the people pushing uh, like they were the, the base of the comic customers right they were kids yeah at least historically all the kids now are reading manga yeah, yeah, that's and, what it is, and that's and that is the new comic industry. It's all coming from over, you yeah, know, all salary boys and now. That, and yeah. uh, the comic book industry over the past couple of years has actually been doing better than it was. I think because they've embraced manga and they've embraced digital stuff. And they're I think all that's, American geniuses. They're all that's the yeah. They are all. I mean, even the ones who aren't American. Those are yeah. the, the real geniuses. Especially the ones who aren't American. The Grant Morrisons yeah. of the world. Speaking of American geniuses, Snoop Dogg bastard. carried the torch for the Olympics today or yesterday. I saw that, yeah. Which huge missed opportunity for him not to turn it to the side and do like yeah, a do joint. A bomb well, I mean, thing. I kind of assumed he did. Or light a He bowl. didn't do that. Yeah, that would it wouldn't rolled. even be funny. It would be so on the nose. Like, of course. <laughs> It'd be to. so disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> it would rule so yeah, but Imagine everybody... getting the opportunity to do that at the Olympics and then just use <laughs> Be so shitty. I mean, everything else they did was really weird too. They could have saved a ton of money on the opening ceremonies and just put a big sign up in Paris that said "We're gay." Yeah, I heard like, that the, it the was opening. Just a lot of flowery, dramatic. Well, there's lots of there was, was lots of there's drag there. queens. There was there's all kinds of things. And number one, like it's France. Yeah. If they're gonna do like crazy mimes and yeah. and and uh, performances and things like that. Fair. So I see all the right wingers and all whatever they're mad about, and they are very mad about the opening ceremonies from last night because apparently they took all the drag queens and they did like a portmanteau of like the Last Supper, yeah, uh, pit painting or whatever. So now they're oh sure, yeah. they're all angry about. And about they're trying to make you mad. They're French. I know. They're like, do they you know to it? make you so mad? You know? Do you know the history of? Do France you not like it? Yeah, yeah. The history of France is them getting yeah. really mad at yeah. religion and, and yeah. guillotine people. Yeah. Yeah. Like they're everybody. doing this. They're the original trolls. That's yeah. what they do. Yeah. They had to delete a scene from it because one of the drag guys' testicles was showing. Really? <laughs> they really went balls out on the performance. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. Okay. No, I saw a screenshot of it. I was like, show me proof. I don't believe you. Let me see the ball. I want to look at it. Our sweet, uh, precious summer princess queen, Cara Dune. What's her name? Oh, Did- yeah. What's up? Uh, oh. Uh, um, the Gino. MMA girl. Um, her na- I, I know who you're talking about. Her. Yeah. Um, We're big the supporters one who's of her. Oh, who's <laughs> suing. Cassandra yeah. Lowens is her name. <laughs> <laughs> I can never remember her name. Gina Carano. Yeah, Gina yeah. We yeah, keep, Gina Carano. We, we get action figures of her. We get every piece of because we feel like it's limited edition now because Disney <laughs> got rid of yeah, all. They of got it. rid of the character, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and also, it's like, it's conflating. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's conflating all the political shit fight stuff and Star Wars. I see and, Cara Dune in a bargain bin. I'm like, ooh, treasure. Yeah. <laughs> the bobblehead. It'll be oh, that's like hilarious. Million dollars in the future. Yeah, we. But she won. She won her lawsuit. No, she didn't win her lawsuit. She just didn't. It didn't get knocked. It didn't get uh, dismissed she by the judge. It. I'm literally so, screaming right now. Basically, the Disney. She's trying to sue Disney for some type of First Amendment discrimination thing. Okay. Right. Because she was a stupid right winger on Twitter saying stupid shit to piss people off, and eventually it got enough. Well, to I mean, it. she compared having to wear a mask with Holocaust victims. Right. Well, no, she, <laughs> it's like that's she hilarious. Got, she, What's the problem? Well, look, no one's saying it's not hilarious. I'm just <laughs> saying that. Uh, but there was other things too. She made fun of pronouns. She 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 was just being a, a Trump supporting yeah. type person sure. on Twitter uh, to stir the pot, right? And so finally. She said something that Disney was able to use as the last straw to just get rid of her. She was, you know, it's it's too more more trouble than it's, it's worth. A headache, right? yeah. So now she's suing for some type of uh, employment discrimination, whatever. Uh, they said, "Hey, this is our First Amendment right, our our, our right to uh, associate with who we want, right?" Mm-hmm. But on some 
technicality or reason, the judge said, well, I'm not going to throw it out. You have to prove your case. So now it's going to go to trial. So obviously Gina Carano has totally just won. She's amazing. She uh, totally took it to the woke uh, Disney uh, Disney people. Fuck and, yeah! Her name makes me And we're gonna and, and now Cara Dune is gonna come back to the Mandalorian. And yes, it's going to, she, she's gonna get her job back. The best yeah. part right. of the Mandalorian. I, yeah, she was the ter- former MMA fighter. So, she was bad in the bad. Mandalorian. Her acting was terrible in the Mandalorian. She was she's gonna be in one. the new show, The Horrors of the New Republic. Or yeah, whatever. <laughs> right. And uh, she was gonna be surprise related to Leia Organa somehow. Right. Eventually. Right. So so what I like to do is I like to collect things that are the worst Star Wars. So we have the <laughs> we have the toy because there's been so much bad like yeah. the I vast bet. majority of yeah. Star Wars is bad. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, it's yeah. Cheap yeah. habit. It's all in the yeah. bottom of the bargain bin. But but the thing that sucks about that is like the first two Star Wars movies are some of the greatest movies of all time. Yeah. Which so we're i I'm I'm stuck with, with having to pay attention to Star sure. Wars, right? Yeah, I know what you mean. So I have the toy over here of the Chewbacca Life Day uh, outfit from the Star Wars Holiday Special. Oh, you, wow. The first terrible, terrible yeah, Star yeah. Wars thing the from 1978, yeah. right? Uh, and then we have a, a Cara Dune bobblehead over here because, you know... It's you the, do? That's yeah. hilarious. Yeah, so it's the... Uh, it's the Holy uh, shit, she looks so pissed! Yeah. She's right. our patron saint. <laughs> right. Amazing. We're fully in support of right. Did you see the um, the Hunter Biden movie that she was in? No. Was there? I know she was in an, in a western because she went and started doing shit for the Daily for Ben Shapiro's. Yeah, because oh, okay. that's all she could. That's all she could. Do. Yeah, yeah, I mean, she's like Roseanne, right? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> so Gavin there McGinnis. was um, some guy. I don't quite know who this dude is, but he he's some sort of English right wing provocateur, mm. and so. He made this movie. He stars as Hunter Biden, and it's you kind of it's like it's like it's supposed to be like a hit piece kind of. Right. Doing and so you go or... in to watch it, and you're like, I just watch it because I'm like, oh, this is ridiculous. I want to see what this is like. Yeah. And it is a re- oddly sympathetic portrayal of Hunter Biden. And okay. I don't know if they meant to do it, but like they do a thing in it where it's like you kind of feel for Hunter Biden. Yeah. Where my, it's like my son Hunter. Yeah, is that the name of it? Yeah, and so the the guy they have playing Joe Biden pops up and he's the guy who plays Joe Biden is like it's more of a hit piece on Joe Biden than anything it's, else. It's, Hunter is just a guy who just seems to not know what's going on. It's Gary Busey. Addicted to drugs and that's like a dead brother and shit. Yeah. So that's not good. And so uh I mean Hunter Biden if you think like all his siblings are dead. Like yeah. he has a very strange life. And yeah. so yeah. Um, it's it, it's so again. He should be able to rape whatever he wants. <laughs> very sympathetic, and right. I I think people should watch it because Cara Dune's in it. She's like it a narrator. Was, okay, so because because it's ostensibly made to show the 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 corruption of the Biden family, but yeah, I, I'm reading here it him. it comes out saying they it's one of those um, which has been happening a lot lately where the people who make the movie or the TV show think that they're showing you their agenda yeah but what it actually is showing you is like this isn't saying what you think it's saying it's yeah, saying something different exactly. right and that's the same kind of thing about like the problem that i have with the the last few seasons of the boys is they really think they're taking it to the trump people like well, aren't aren't the yeah, aren't aren't, isn't trump dumb we're gonna make the villains say the exact same things that the trump people in real life are saying or whatever yeah but whenever, if if you have like an understanding, if you maybe are around a lot of Trump people or whatever, they're kind of showing that they don't really understand the motivations behind a lot of that kind of stuff, especially this most recent season where they're basically lifting things out of the headlines and having the bad guys say the things in the headlines. You know? Yeah, they don't show. That's a really good way of putting it, that, that they, they don't understand the people that they're yeah. that they're like, like last season, I, you, you've watched all the boys, right? Last season there was the, the stepdad uh, of, um, what's his name? Uh, Mother's uh, Milk. Mi- yeah, um, Milk's uh, and daughter or whatever. He's taking her to like Trump rally type thing, right wing, kind of things but there's no like he just is a dumb trump guy there's no like it, it, he doesn't seem like real that realistic for that character like his motivation doesn't seem it's just the story needs him to be a dumb trump guy so we're just going to have him be a trump dumb so trump guy, there's right? um maybe that civil war movie does it I, I haven't seen it i don't really plan on seeing it but there there there's been really no attempt uh, by anybody making movies or, or shows or, or whatever to be like, okay, so these are Trump supporters. 
why are they like this? Yeah, right, right. You know what I mean? And and there's there's no interest in doing that. I think I think they just want to to vilify. And like I fucking hate that guy. So like yeah. I don't feel bad yeah. for anybody right. who gets made fun of for supporting him. Right. But I do think that there it would at least be interesting to be like. Hey, here's why these people feel that we, right. you know, instead of reducing it down to just a th- to just yeah. a, a thing. Well, and the same thing in the second season of The Boys, where you had um, Stormfront, right? Yeah, and she starts off, Stormfront. I guess, kind of disingenuous, pretending to be, like be anti corporate and more like on the liberal side. Yeah, and then a few episodes in, she just switches and starts saying Nazi stuff. Yeah, and like with no explanation, and the and now everybody is suddenly on board with her being a Nazi, and then it shows you these memes that are getting shared right. these like nazi me- pro yeah. stormfront memes and they're terrible memes they don't make they're, they're the the one thing that i can say about the right wing trump people is their memes are good <laughs> like they they're, they're funny like they yeah. can be really funny with their memes and these are just like dumb lame memes almost french level troll yeah. yeah for a long time for a long time uh right wing people were very 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 bad at any kind of political humor yeah. and they're still bad at political humor but their their memes are better i think the people who write the boys eric kripke and all those people they they're in a bubble they're in that like hollywood bubble and they don't really get the other side enough to make an engaging character or story of those people right yeah all i want yeah. them to do is make a gory superhero show just do that yeah you don't have to be social commentary well, right now what's weird is um the comic book that it's based on fucking sucks. Yeah. I think it's really bad. Yeah, I mean, and he looked at it. I think it sucks. And it's, it's very sophomoric. Okay. Um, it's just like of. it's crazy that it, it was. It lasted for like seventy issues. It was yeah. around for forever. Um, Is it Warren Ellis? It's uh, it's um, uh, Garth Ennis. Oh, Garth Ennis. Yeah. Garth Ennis. And yeah, a guy yeah. named Derek Robinson. Right. I think it's I think it's, how, it's his name. Gar- Garth Ennis did Preacher too, right? He's done a lot of really good stuff. And so Preacher's really of, good. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. weird that that was. But yeah, the Boys was more of just a kind of um, kind of like snot nose punk kid yeah. Yeah. Uh, like I'm what gonna make su- it what if Superman said fuck yeah it was that kind of thing <laughs> and that's why this- Superman in my comic says fuck <laughs> and that's why the first season of the boys was pretty refreshing because it was it was an interesting take on the idea. It was, yeah. And um, it was better than the comic in, in a lot of people's opinion right uh, I think it still is and then I watched Thelma Thelma was about an old lady that gets ten grand stole from her and then goes to go get it back in L.A. because she doesn't understand the internet and she gets scammed online. And uh, she had a, a line that I'm going to start using. She, it's the same thing, Donnie. You and I have been talking about with our parents. At what point are they old? Where they need to, or, or when we're old, do we need to stop doing stuff and just chill out and go sit down? Yeah, you know, you concern for your older friends and parents and stuff, and they're driving. Oh the yeah, sure. Be. And you're like, who's going to tell them to just get ready to die? Like, what's next? They, they're they desperately grasping for straws of, of validity. I can still do stuff. So she gets on a rascal and goes across LA, and everybody's trying to stop her. And she says, one time this guy tried to get in her way, and she was like, just be a doll and don't make a fuss. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to use that anytime I have opposition in my life from now be on. Be a doll and don't make just a fuss. Just be a doll and don't make a fuss. <laughs> and then I watched Twisters. Twisters, this girl, of course, her friends got killed by a, a hurricane at the beginning or a tornado or whatever. So she's all sad the whole time. Does she become friends with Twisters by the end? She, she's traumatized by the movement of air. So like, you can't even, <laughs> you can't even fart around right. her. She'll start crying. Somebody no. sneezed and she pissed her pants. No, what it say. is, it's the son of the twister from the first movie. <laughs> and it's going it's after fun. it's going after Helen Hunt and Bill Paxton's it's child. Ruins Midget for, Town. It's, oh, it's, no. you, you've seen Jaws four, Ass. right? It's the Jaws four of tornadoes. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> that just follows you from coast to coast. Yeah, yeah. and then it roars at you. Amazing <laughs> when uh, you kill it. I have a couple more fun things. We'll try to get through them real quick. Sorry, I put all of the jokes at the end. My wife won't take the trash all the way out because she has to put a bra on. So I come home from work and there's trash in like blocking the door. So then I have to take it before I can come home from work. It's kind of, I mean, she doesn't mean to do it that way. She just puts it out because she doesn't want to put a bra on. And it's now I give her shit for it because I'm like, I'm almost home from work. I just want to come home and now I got to take, take out the garbage. Yeah. yeah. 
She's like, well, do you want me out in the neighborhood with my titties out all over the place? And I'm like, yeah, raise morale. That's great. <laughs> you know, I'd rather not have to. If you got to show some nip to a neighbor yeah. for me not to have to walk this bag around the corner when I'm done with my commute. At least you get invited to a lot more dinner parties. Yeah, I'll take it. Sure. Get your titties out. <laughs> Just do something. Anything. Yeah, <laughs> J.D. Vance had sex with a couch, apparently. Yep. This guy keeps being my brother. This guy rules. Yeah, he had a gay dream when he was little. He does all the same shit as me. I have 10 minutes about fucking a couch. That was like my old set at the Valve That's 12 hilarious. years ago. So Well, lots of people have fucked couches. I've known like Eskimo multiple people. brother of fuck. Yeah. No, yeah. I put a Ziploc bag in it between the cushions. That's with, what I'm saying. Like, I, I've known, although that's a little. Like I'm a guy for it. Okay. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a little worrisome. But yeah, I, I know like. This is, I didn't know what a vagina felt like. I was, it was all conjecture. Just guessing. <laughs> yeah. Well, if it's anything, if it feels anything like this couch, I'm set for <laughs> life. Well, then there was another one about like. um having sex with a dolphin that he like searched for in his porn. There's basically, they're trying to, they're trying to sink him with things that basically are just going to make the dudes who were already going to vote for him more like, hell yeah, brother. Yeah. I mean, but there's been so much news and it all gets brushed over by the next thing that happens. Yeah. Kind of like what I was saying earlier about Batman, you know, the movie sucked and it was crazy and there's good parts, but my favorite part was him saying I'm rich. Yeah. Uh, the best thing out of the news for the last few weeks that kind of got skipped over was Trump, whenever Biden said we beat health care or something, he was like, I don't know what he said. I don't even think he knows what he just said. And it, that was almost as good as this old Rosie O'Donnell line. I didn't say that about women. I said that about Rosie O'Donnell. Every once Rosie in a while, Trump. O'Donnell, you're a fat pig. Yeah. <laughs> Every once in a while, DJ T comes through with like a tight one liner. Every once in a while, yeah. Well, that's how he um, won, right? Yeah. He was basically a roast comedian. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. You know, and I, I, if you ever go back, I mean, it's it sucks because. It's hard to go back without being colored by all the years course, since, right? Because yeah. and I do not like Donald Trump, and I don't want him to be president again. Yeah. But if you can just take all the trauma out of your mind for a second it's and hilarious. just watch those primary debates They're in amazing. 2016, he's, he's so good. Like yeah. just the tearing them all down and and make, making. Uh, nicknames out of them and how nothing works and all of their like politician minds are like oh how could you do how, what do, how, they, oh, yeah like they were like yeah. no yeah. one had ever really done it like that yeah, before so they I were know. like i don't know what i'm supposed and, to and and to his credit the first one to realize what was happening was chris christie because chris christie had a little bit of that in him he has a little bit of that at new does, jersey yeah. that yeah. attitude that that i'm gonna come back at you with stuff and He's he was like man yeah. Yeah. He's the original moth man <laughs> <laughs> he's the jersey he's devil right and uh, and he was the first one to recognize what was going on, and he was the first one to go over to his to his campaign and say, you know what, I've got to support. This is going to be the guy, you know. Uh, but you just the the Marco Rubio and the Jeb Bush and all the people who just looked so pathetic they up did, against they him. just looked pathetic. Yeah, yeah, there was a clip that I was watching though of. Uh, of uh, Rand Paul, I guess, was kind of criticizing him or whatever, and he comes right back and just insults Rand Paul's haircut, and Rand Paul just kind of stops and smiles, and he's like, "He got me." Like, well, I mean, what are you yeah. supposed to say? I know, yeah, yeah. your haircut's yeah. terrible. You're... No, it's not. <laughs> no, yeah, no, I your, mean, your hair's bad. No, your hair's bad. <laughs> thing, it just makes you look like an idiot. Like it's like some. You're ugly. No, I'm not. Right. You're stupid. No, I'm not. Right. Fuck you. Yeah, like there's, there's once someone just says that yeah. to you, it's like, well, all right. Is the Sixth Street Rehab going to affect the Valve at all? The Sixth Street Rehab? Yeah. Have you heard about it? No. They're going multi-story on a lot of the stuff. They're going to have a different skyline. There used to be like a sight line of the Capitol where they kept the buildings low so you could have a nice view. Well, yeah. It used to be a law. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That so you couldn't have it. Altering taller. that and adding it. Like they're going to be from eight to ten floors, some of the buildings. Oh, okay. Then they're doing rehabs downtown? It's fine. There's more shade. That's great. It's, it's fucking hot as balls. Yeah. Just don't fuck with the Velv. This podcast is Just brought to you by the Velv Vita Room. It's yes. A <laughs> historical comedy club. It's got a, a landmark plaque on the front of it. Mark yes. Twain performed there. <laughs> the, the phrase, you can put your boots in the oven, don't make them biscuits, was actually coined at the Velv Vita Room. Yeah, by our door guy, Michael Park. Yeah. Is there a green room there? <laughs> um, Kind of. I mean, no. Yeah, I mean, so there's supposed the to be. the best comedy club in town. There's it's supposed got, to be, uh, but it's filled the, with stuff from Esther's Follies yeah. next door. It's got so the correct no, amount of seats. It's got a bar, a stage, seats. Shut the fuck up. Go in there. You yeah. can hear everything. Everything's nice. There's like no it. There's no airs. There's no fanciness. No. 
It's just it, it is for exactly what it's for, and that's yeah. you go there and you go do it. It's a room. Yeah, it's a Velveeta it's a, room. It's a room to tell jokes in. Right. I think it's the oldest comedy club in Austin. Now. It's the longest running one. Yeah. If you you know disqualify Cap for moving and shutting off. Well, they went out of business. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, the Cap City Comedy Longest Club running. now is not Cap City Comedy Club on 183, technically, right? It's no, so it's they're owned by uh, the Helium uh, Comedy Club group, but they uh, it's it's still Cap City, right? They they right. kept the names because it's, it's been around for you know yeah, but it's time. not it's not the same group of people that were the one 183. No, right? uh, yeah. so it's um it's a different. I know that one of the owners, uh, Margie, I know that she's no longer involved with them. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure at least. But um, it's a few. I know it's, it's some of the same owners um, are, are are still involved with it. I, I don't know to what capacity exactly, but I know that like Colleen still works with them, and uh, a lot of the same managers and staff work there. So I, I, I don't actually know. Right. Speed bike is going to be on hold for indefinitely. Yeah. Oh yeah. So we had uh, our legendary speed mic open mic at the Velvet Room every Thursday. Um, the problem is that uh, so we would do a showcase beforehand that did they would usually do well. And then as soon as the mic would start, everyone would leave. Yeah. And then we mm-hmm. just would look at like the sales and be like, no one's buying anything. No one's buying any drinks for like two hours. Yeah. So like we're just yeah, we're just not doing it. Yeah. Comics. We might br- we might bring it. Well, it's not even about comics necessarily. It's about like the audience. When, when broke, and we bring our point. friends and we're only friends with each other. Yeah. So there's no money. <laughs> there's no money. And so it's like it's a thing where it's like, hey, if if we're not spending money you know what i mean that's right, right, that's right. why whenever i post about it i'd be like hey share this graphic like i want people to come to this yeah, yeah. and that would just yeah so it's like um it just yeah in the end wasn't really worth it yeah. and there's so many mics at this point that there's just it just doesn't serve the need that it used to so yeah, yeah there's two it's in- also the most stressful night of the week for me so glad that that's not happening <laughs> hey, that sounds like good management it sounds like that place is well managed you got rid of the <laughs> well, thing that's yeah. the worst and yeah get rid of the thing that's costing you money and yes yeah. you actually made yeah. it easier on yourself as well you delegated the fuck out of that thing yeah. yes so. i did I delegated it <laughs> yeah. to the fucking waste bin get the fuck out of here speed mike so uh yeah i think i think we're we're good that's i think the, we've uh, covered all the that, topics i think we've hit everything that's the In episode the for today um Pat Dean. So, do you have uh, what? Like, what are your social handles? How do how do people see you um, and reach you? It's yeah. My. What do you want us to do? Go to the Valve. Yeah, just go to the Valve. Go to Austin don't, Java. Don't, <laughs> listen. How about stay the fuck away from my social medias? How about that? I don't want to engage with you. No, I don't. Right. Uh, <laughs> but no, my Instagram is Dean Man P. You can see me there, and then I'm at the Valve Room every weekend. Um, and then, uh, but, 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 yeah, Pod, listen your to podcast, Lanolax Corporation. Yeah. Yeah, Lanolax Corporation. Yeah. I Learned Nothing podcast. Yeah. The, uh, we just sell go, those up, yeah. Go find some, the old episodes. Yeah, yeah, they're fun. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks a lot. Thanks for being here with us. Thanks for having me, and thank you, America.